Hello again, boys and girls. My name is Miss Jillian, and I'm a librarian working with the Petersburg Public Library this summer for our virtual summer reading program, Imagine Your Story. This week's theme is a new twist on an old tale. So what does that mean? So let's take a classic story. It could be Beauty and the Bees, Cinderella, Jack and the Beanstalk, and you're going to put your own spin on it. So what does putting your own spin on it mean? It could mean you could add new characters, you could change the personality of some of the characters, maybe you want to change the ending. But this is your way to really get creative and take one of the classic stories and put your own twist on it. Make it special, make it your own. I would love to hear what you come up with. There's a criteria I have for looking for a good book. There's three reasons why a book is just absolutely amazing. The first, it's really funny. I mean, laugh out loud. It could be the pictures are funny, maybe the words, the story, and the best stories have a combination of both. Great story, hilarious, and the pictures go along perfectly with it. So that's a funny book. I love to find a funny book. Especially if you read that book more than once, you go back to it again and again, and it's still funny, well, you found yourself a really good book. The second criteria I have for a really good book is if you learn something. You would call these books interesting. You pick up a book, it could be an idea about an idea, a person, something you've never heard of before, and you just found this out and you're like, wow, this is fascinating. These are the type of books where you go to an adult and say, hey, guess what I just learned? These books are very important because these books tell us a little bit more about the world that we didn't know before. And then there's one more criteria that I have to be an absolutely fantastic book. And this one is my favorite. And these are the inspiring books. These are the stories that make us feel good and happy inside. These are the books where we learn a little bit more about ourselves and our place in the world. How can we make it better? How can we understand ourselves a little bit better? How can we appreciate who we are as a person a little bit better? Inspiring books make us feel wonderful inside. They make us want to do, make this world a little bit better. Inspiring books are my favorite type of stories to discover. They're extremely rare, so if you come across one, hold on to it tight and read it again and again. Because inspiring books, they don't just inspire you that first time, but they continue to inspire you every time that you read them. Now without further ado, let me introduce to you this gorgeous book. The Magical Yet. It is written by Angela Di Terlizzi, and it is beautifully illustrated by Lorena Alvarez. And I am reading this book with permission from Disney Hyperion. The Magical Yet. There are days when your dreams haven't come true or you're upset by the things you just can't do. If you've lost or failed or cried just a bit, you're tired of waiting, ready to quit. Like that shiny new bike you couldn't ride and it didn't matter how hard you tried. You couldn't pedal, and you couldn't steer, and you couldn't get that bike into gear. Then, when you thought you were on the right track, you popped a wheelie and fell on your back. And now you won't ride. No way, not never. No riding for you. You'll walk forever. Don't give up now. There's a major game changer. A most amazing thought rearranger. Someone to show you how good you can get. Now introducing. The Magical Yet. With this yet's magic,
logic, you can begin to see that you're going beyond where you've been. There are so many things that you've learned to do when you didn't know the yet was with you. Like when you babbled before you could talk or how you crawled before you could walk. Yet, a dreamer, a schemer, a hoper, a trier, a maker, a doer, a gotta fly higher. This yet finds a way even when you don't, and yet knows you will when you think you won't. Like that shiny new bike that you couldn't ride, hop right back on with the yet by your side. Yet doesn't mind warm-ups, fixes and flops, do-overs, redos, stumbles and stops. Yet knows there's mistakes, some big and some small, with yet you're sure to get over them all. Play the kazoo or play the bazoon, jam with the yet and you'll soon be in tune. Try skateboarding tricks like the ollie heel flip. This yet can get to the championship. Tongue twisters twisted, your tongue in a knot, yet says keep trying and practice a lot. Be patient. Yet can't do it all overnight. Some things take days, months, or years to get right. But if you keep leaping, dreaming, wishing, waiting, learning, trying, missing, With the yet as your guide along the way, you'll do all the things you can't do today. Now you're bolder, braver, starting to see with yet you can get where you want to be. yet knew that you could. You're not just writing, you're getting quite good. But don't stop now, you've got so much to do. The good news is, this yet grows with you. So no matter how big or old you may get, You'll never outgrow. You'll never forget. You can always believe in the magic of yet. The end. I hope you enjoyed the magic of yet as much as I did. This is such an inspiring story and I think it's wonderful for every boy and girl out there and also every male and female adult out there too because we're never too old to try something new. So I want you to think about it. Is there something that you have yet to learn how to do? 
but you want to do it and you're just thinking, I just can't do it. I've tried and I tried, but guess what? All you need to do is think about your magical yet. And I know that you're going to be able to do it because it's inside of you. The magical yet is something that you already have and you may not even know it yet. Because all you have to do is think about something that you wanted to do before and you couldn't do it. Think about it now. You can do it, which means that your yet is with you. So I'm thinking we would do a fun activity today where we're going to make our own magical yet. So for our craft we're going to do to go along with our book, The Magical Yet, I would love for you to make your own yet. So this is an example of a couple of yets. First, I'm going to show you mine. I made it kind of large, but this is a yet that I made. And this yet is holding some yarn and some needles because that is something that I am working on getting a little bit at, better at knitting. And then I want to show you my daughter's. She made a little yet herself. So if you want to make your own net, you can. I well, use a piece of paper some crayons or markers, and some scissors. Make sure that they are safety scissors for your age. So I want you to think about something that you're trying to get better at. Maybe it's just like in the story and you haven't learned how to ride your bike yet and you like to get a little bit better at that. Or maybe you haven't learned how to tie your shoes. Or maybe you're trying to learn how to play a sport, basketball or golf or tennis. Something that you really want to be wonderful at. Maybe it's something that you're really passionate about, or maybe it's just something that's small that you've been trying to figure out how to do and you just haven't got there yet. So your yet can be a nice little reminder. You can put it next to your bed. You can put it on your fridge. And every time you look at it, you'll think, okay, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to be. Boys and girls, I hope that you enjoyed the magical yet. The next story that I'm going to share with you is one of my all-time favorites. It is such a special book. I like to call this one a classic. It is quite a few years old at this time, but it is one of those books that has just stood the test of time. And every time I read it, I discover something new and special about it that I didn't before. So I am very excited to share it with you, and I hope that you love it as much as I do. I know that you will. So just like The Magical Yet, the book that I'm going to share with you is very similar in themes because it's about a child who hasn't quite discovered yet who she is going to be. But as soon as she does, this magical, special thing occurs. And that's what can happen with you. So I want you to really pay close attention to this story because it has a lot to offer. Now, what is this book? It is Ada Twist Scientist. It is written by Andrea Beatty and is illustrated by David Roberts and I'm reading it with permission from Abrams Books. Ada Twist Scientist. Ada Marie, Ada Marie said not a word until the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world, but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and made her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day, chasing each sound and sight and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. Her parents were frazzled, but tried not to freak, as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly young Ada, with lots in her head, would have something to say when it ought to be said. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Her parents yelled, stop, as all good parents would. Ada's quinn quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and she simply asked, why? it 
tick? And why does it talk? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why and then what, how, and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her day's parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. What is it for? Will it be the same? What if? Why? Will it? When will it? When? What? How does it? Even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wrecked havoc at school. But this witch was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all of the traits of a great scientist. Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sounds that make mockingbirds sing. When a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes, Zowie, said Ada, which got her to thinking, what is the source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there is no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She'd start at the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true, the terrible stink came from dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis two. Then zowie, the stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop! to the thinking chair now by the time we count three. Enough, said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why? Ada questioned. Her mother said no. What? Ada queried. Her father said go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. She sat all alone by herself in the hall and Ada once more could say nothing at all. Ada sat 
and she sat and she sat and she thought about science and Stu and the cat and how her experiments had made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is it part of success? Our mess is a problem. And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question and then she asked two. And each of those led her to three questions more. And some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started on why and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair was now the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's what they did, because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and a heart that is true. They remade their world. Now they're all in on the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asked lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a great scientist. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two? Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? The end. This was Ada Twist Scientist. I hope, I hope that you enjoyed this book as much as I did. It's one of my absolute favorites for many reasons. First of all, Ada Twist, she was a little bit slower learning to talk, right? She didn't talk right away in the beginning of the story. And that's because she was taking everything in. And once she started to talk, well, boy, did she talk, right? And I think that's just a great example that everybody does things in their own way at their own time. That you don't feel like you need to rush when it's time for you to do something. Don't compare yourself to your brothers and sisters or to your friends. Maybe like with our other story, maybe your sibling read a, wrote, learned how to ride a bike a little bit earlier than you did, but that's okay because we do things in our own time. And also what's cool about this is that Ada has a special talent, right? She's a scientist and we all have our own special talent and maybe you haven't found it yet. And again, that's okay. So take your time to find what makes you special, to find your gift that you want to share with the world. And just like Ada, once you do, everyone around you is going to support you and really help bring out the magic that you have inside. I have one more story to share with you today. And this book is called You Matter. And it was written by and illustrated by Christian Robinson. And I am reading with permission from Simon & Schuster. You matter. The small stuff, too small to see. Those who swim with the tide and those who don't. The first to go and the last, 
you matter. When everyone thinks you're a pest. When something is just out of reach. If you fall down. If you have to start all over again. Even if you are really gassy, you matter. home is far away. Sometimes someone you love says goodbye. Sometimes you feel lost and alone, but you matter. Old and young, the first to go and the last. The small stuff, too small to see. You matter. And that was You Matter. I hope that you enjoyed this story. This is another beautiful story by one of my favorite authors and illustrators, Christian Robinson. I think it has a wonderful message. You, you matter. No matter how small you are, how tall you are, how good you are at something, you matter. And I think that's kind of the message of all the stories I read today. These are all fall under that wonderful category of inspiring stories. We had The Magical Yet, Ada Twist Scientist, and You Matter. So these stories are all about you. You are wonderful, you are magical, you are special. Maybe you haven't figured out yet what you wanna do or you haven't quite done what you wanna do quite yet. Maybe you have a special talent and again, you haven't started yet. Maybe those around you don't quite understand yet. But all of this big message I want you to know is that you matter. You are special. And I would love to hear about what you're doing. Write a story. Be creative. The summer reading program is all about children being creative and telling the story that you have to tell. My name is Miss Jillian, and I am a librarian working at the Petersburg Public Library for our summer reading program, Imagine Your Story. And I hope to read with you again very soon.